Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it, and I promise to update this channel daily. If you like this watch, see it and purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. Today, we discuss the 2012 iteration of a watch that bowed in 2006. Platinum, the 5960 bowed in 2006. Rose Gold, the 5960 evolved in 2009, and Rose Gold with Black Dial, this watch emerged in 2012. Now that we've discussed the history of this watch, let's discuss the fit of it. Rolex's first ever in-house automatic chronograph, 40.5 millimeters in diameter, a timepiece that is moderately sized, a very wearable lug-to-lug -lug dimension that spans only 49.3 millimeters. I can endorse this watch for a wrist as small as 14 centimeters in circumference. The thickness of the watch is reasonable for dress attire. 13.8 millimeters with a generously sloped case flank and concave bezel it will slide easily underneath a sleeve and the watch has a contemporary 21 millimeter lug spacing so though it's not an oversized watch it does have a modern footing and stance on the wrist the timepiece is well shaped to fit on a smaller wrist as the lugs drape themselves around the wrist rather than flaring out stridently. It's the effective camber or curvature of the case from side to side that makes this watch an agreeable partner for smaller arms like myself. Alligator leather, medium scale, bolstered down its center, monotone stitch. You can see it actually features a sheer cut side that shows the layers of construction with a Patek Philippe rose gold clasp, all of high polished finish internally, and there's a filigree style or evacuated Calatrava cross buckle on the exterior. It's a handsome look and one that also keeps the watch resolutely secure and anchored while donning or removing at bedside. The case is all of high polish, but being a moderately sized watch, it doesn't seem ostentatious. It seems rich. Also thoughtfully detailed, the watch is all of compound curves and arcs with one strong crease or crevice formed by the junction of the case band and the bezel running circumferentially to give the watch a single hard masculine character line outboard. The pump pushers, evocative of vintage Patek Philippe timepieces, and the dial, perhaps evocative of vintage Patek Philippe perpetual calendars, though it is a Patek Philippe annual calendar, the complication that Patek itself introduced to the industry back in 1996, 10 years before the basic 5960 bowed. A lot going on here. Let's start at the top. Apertures for the day, the date, and the month being an annual calendar, the watch need be adjusted only once per year during the jump from February to March. A power reserve indicator just beneath, and it traces a power reserve of 45 to 55 hours. Hands at center, leaf style, counterweighted launched seconds for the chronograph, and luminescent hour and minutes. The watch is a flyback chronograph, so though it doesn't have any constant seconds display, what you can do, since it's a vertical clutch chronograph that can run continuously, is you simply reset the chronograph. You set your time, you wait for your reference time to match hour, minute, and second, and then you reset the timepiece while it's running, and you use the flyback functionality of the chronograph to synchronize the seconds hand of your watch. If you're going to use it as the seconds hand corresponding to the minutes and the hours, that effectively is your zero reset seconds. It also makes it convenient for those who have to time events occurring in quick succession to have a flyback chronograph capability. A mono counter with both hours and minutes on a single scale concentrically laid out at six o'clock. So you have hours and chronograph minutes up to 60, by the way, as long as you keep your inner and outer scales straight. And then you have a small AM PM indicator that lets you know when not to attempt to set the calendar manually using the case link pusher adjusters. The dial base, the black dial that bowed in 2012 is not quite as glossy as it appears on the video. It's more of a matte black with the applique gold elements being high polished. The contrast level is high and the quality is superb. As you can see, all of the dial furniture hand laid and hand finished. The timepiece, just as ornate on the case back, but it is an automatic chronograph, so not everything is uniformly visible. Let's get super close because what is visible is exquisite. The Patek Philippe seal, what does it mean? Well, in abandoning the Geneva Hallmark, Patek had to offer something in compensation. So there's an attestation, no worse than minus three plus two seconds per day of deviation. The watch featuring a Gyromax free sprung balance, a unidirectional winding system with ceramic rotor bearings that are high efficiency and unlubricated. There is a column wheel functionality to this chronograph and you can see the interaction of the recentering hammers with the heart cams in the middle. As you can see, as I cycle the chronograph, let me try to get the column wheel into play. 
You can see the interaction of the column wheel with its levers and horns. It is a capped column wheel, so it doesn't look like the typical crenellated tower you associate with this mechanism. Of course, vertical clutch, meaning not only can you leave the chronograph running continuously, but the start and stop of the chronograph has no stagger or jump involved. The timepiece does beat away at 28,800 vibrations per hour, and it is an exceptionally modern caliber. The only missing feature is the hacking seconds, but once more, with the zero reset capability endowed by the flyback chronograph, you won't miss it, and it's a historic piece, as the watch, with its free-sprung gyromax balance and a silicon hairspring beneath, robustly anti magnetic and the latest iteration of Patek's first in-house automatic chronograph. Circular Cote de Genève across the rotor, circular Cote de Genève across the bridges, engine turning perlage on the base plate, engine turning perlage on the center of the rotor, black polished screw heads, and mirrored anglage beveling. See this watch and make it yours on the watch box. Patek 5960R by night. See it by day on our homepage.